survived actually and who is not engineer what did you do how did you change the diets first i took care of the environment not just the simple self child our environment should be clean free of death that could invite mosquitoes mm, that's make, awesome yes, make sure that the house is well netted the child must proper ventilation. Thirdly, good food. Good food. Awesome. Good food. Awesome. And this good food is not about words. It's not about money. Vegetables. Balanced diet. Fruits. Plenty of water. The child must be hydrated. Just like every one of us. We know what is going on in the country today. We are experiencing heat wave. If you don't drink water, you don't have to be a sickle cell before you slump. Now, welcome back. It is still Mama Helen Yu, all the way from Wari, Nigeria today. Yeah. What would you have to say? You have women in your, you know, I mean, around you, and the mentality of no girl you can't do it let's have the mate phones instead how do you address that <laughs> in um, addition to what she has said every human being is capable of doing anything if god is helping you and so there's nothing a man is doing that a woman can't do however the woman because she's operating from a position of disadvantage need to showcase herself that she's capable of doing this thing. She's capable? Yes. Okay. So she won't need to sit back and think that somebody will come and pick her up from her house and just dump her in the position. She needs to show herself that... She has just talked to us about availability, isn't yes. it? Bringing you yourself out. Available, you must make yourself available. available. You must show that what you are being asked to do, you don't need to cut corners you can achieve it. Good. It's Without, possible. Yes. You can drive it. Mm. What would you say? Uh, you know, I, I, you know, you, you seem very passionate. You're a mm. passionate woman. Isn't it needed for horse to celebrate ourselves exactly. even when you are yet to become exactly. an office holder? Or it political is. office holder? Let me just say you something. I'm a professional nurse. I know in the nursing profession it's mainly women. Oh, a few among us are men. And uh, let me create a scenario of this sickle cell issue. When I have this passion from my nursing school, with the experience I have with children and adults who are afflicted with this disorder, I vow that God use me to help humanity. That anywhere, any day, no matter how it is, let me speak for these children. How is it going to be eradicated from my state? How is it going to be eradicated from my local government? How is it going to be eradicated from my country, from the Black Rose? And that has been my passion. But you can imagine that as I came, since 1991, from the old Bender State, I've been talking about sickle cell, but nobody's listening mm. until our mama came on board. But right now that she came on board, Everybody wants to talk about sickle cell. And even the doctors, they are not angry. Why should it be a woman <laughs> not talking, parading herself with? I'm telling you about the, the gender problem. Yes, but I'm very focused. Yes. And I don't care about whatever you see and whatever you do. All I'm after is that these children in Delta State and beyond must be properly cared for. 
So who cyber is involved is not the issue. I tell them this is Delta State. This is Siko Cell we are talking about. We are not talking about a man. We are not talking about a mukoro. We are not talking about a doctor. We are not talking about a nurse. But the passion you have for these children. And thereafter, they are asked, oh, so this woman now is not inviting, you know, this, like Minister of Health. Imagine now, instead of us to be the stakeholder, you can imagine now, we are not the owner of the house, but we are now coming on invitation because the old five are taking off. <laughs> and they are not angry. <laughs> Both the commissioner, the directors, and the doctor. But I don't give a damn because I'm very focused. Once you know what you are doing, you will get there. I love that. Yes. Dr. Okwe, what yes. would you have to say? You're a woman and you're a doctor. Yes. Yes. Tell well, me uh, about In my this. profession, we have a lot of males compared to the females. We can have a class of 100 students and then about uh, 90 are males and then females. So you ask, how do we go about it? How do we <laughs> come on board? How do we? So it's hard work. We don't sleep. You have to really work very, very hard, hard to, prove to be able to prove yourself that you can make it. Mm. And you are even better. Yeah. So that is the major thing. And then the focusing. You must focus on your ideals. I love that. You must, you focus, must focus on your ideals, ideals, what you want to do. Several times, um, family life and things like that could derail you, could go back. Mm. But at the same time, you have to come up again. Despite the family life, become stronger. And then focus, and you get there. Even if you're a lonely voice, and no one seems to be supportive yes. of this course, as a woman who knows our worth, that is true. you must never bow to uh, pressure. pressure yes. That's Gender true. inequality in Nigeria can actually be discarded if we as women would come together and focus on bringing the meaningful change that is going to take Nigeria to the next level, yes. even as we progress as a nation. That is it. In a little while, we're going to go on break, but when we are back, it is to ask um, Dame Edit what we must not do moving forward. Possibly as we're back, you know, as we um, try to tackle the issue of sickle cell anemia, or as women, how can we win? Yes, we will. Yes, we can. we can. And yes, we must do the needful to ensuring that. Back in a moment. Mama Helen and you. Mama Helen and you, all the way from Wari, Nigeria today. Well, thank you. We've actually been talking about women in politics, and then, of course, the disorder, the disorderly aspect of um, sickle cell anemia. Um, and then, of course, so, so many things have been shared. We've, we've listened to uh, white for governor, governor to Okowa of Delta State, and we've also listened to some of the women she came with. But I know that there are those in the audience right now itching to be heard. Perhaps you have some questions for, for the wife, or perhaps some of the women who came with her as well. If you, ha if you do have anything to share with us, kindly introduce yourself. Let us know who you are, and then, of course, you can then ask your question. My name is Oreva Solo, and I want to appreciate Mama Ellen and you for this platform. I have a question and a contribution. The first question is about the sickle cell um, clinic. I want to say that we have a medical center here, right here in the church. My question is, what can we do to have a sickle cell center in our medical center so it can help the people around this um, environment? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I'm sure I'd, you know, she would like to respond. Oh, is that, okay. I have a contribution so, as well please go ahead. concerning gender inequality. inequality. I think it starts from the home. We have male, we have female children. And sometimes the way we bring up our children from the beginning tells them, oh, I'm more important than you because I'm a boy. Yeah. Or the girl is less important than the boy. And it starts from the choice we give 
us at home we give to our children. Oh, because you are a girl, you need to wash the plate. The girl needs to sweep the floor. You need to do this, you need to do that. And from that stage, you're already telling the children that you are different. And then there are certain things you cannot achieve as a woman because you are less important. And then as a man or as a boy child, you see our little children in the home telling you, don't you know I'm a boy? You know, you can't talk to me like that. You know, like my son will say, I'm older than you. You have to respect me. You know, so it starts from the home. By the time we start making our children understand that you are the same, you are equal, and you can achieve what you want to achieve, no matter the gender, it helps. And then by the time they go outside, you know, you don't find this gender equality anymore in our society. So it starts from the home. But that's my own little contribution. contribution. Let's awesome. do the little we can at home to bring up our children right. Awesome, 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 beautiful, beautiful. Can I ask? Would you want? That? Yes, please. Um, beginning with the first question, very good. I'm so glad that you're interested in what I'm interested in. You will wonder, how did this woman, like Mama has told us, in this period of recession, I've been able to open eight clinics around the states. No clinic costs less than 10 million by reason of the equipment you buy. You see, when you are in need of something, you bring down yourself. When I went to Agbo, the first clinic we opened was in Agbo. I went to every political office holder. I keep telling them, you must write your name on gold. You have not come here to build houses. You have come here to affect yes. humanity. Give me money. <laughs> yes, sir. Ro. Give me money. So I collect any community I get to. I reach out to people around there. These five fingers are not the same. There are people who can do things depending on your manner of approach. So if we are interested in this place, I will begin with Mama. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all I need do is an open door policy. I will tell you the equipment we need, what it will cost. You give me a space that you, you feel that will be useful. Then we begin. I'll be very glad if you want us to come here. That's very good. You know, your contribution and I will make a deal. I mean, I think that's mm. what she just told us yes. here. And then regarding your contribution, quite interesting. Um, I'm sure someone will say, wow. It's, it, do we have the second person, please? I'm Mrs. Evelyn Beno. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My question is this. Which is the focus for the O5 initiative? Eradicating or cure? or care for the sickle cell anemia which one carries more weight because i happen to meet one-on-one -on -one with people suffering from this uh, challenge and uh, the, what they go through now i want to suggest i don't know if we can throw more weight on stopping it eradicating it by Stay uh, partnering with churches. Make sure that before you join people, they must be, you know, their blood group will be, must match. If you go ahead and pull people out of it, at least by the year, whatever, whatever, we have total <laughs> eradication. Praise the Lord. In the spirit of L O V love. love, love, and and it can be very blind. Mm. How do you go about telling two people who are madly, crazily, and yes. everything, literally in, in love? Yes. And then you say, you say to them, you can't marry because of your genotype. How do you go about doing that? Beginning with her question, we are on both sides. We are doing advocacy to let people know their genotype and telling them if you are AS, the other one is AS, you don't have business getting married. Reason being that four in uh, one in four children you could have a sickle. Like Mama had just said, if both we are not God, if you say you are love, you are in love, love. <laughs> and this love is so blind and it will not be the eyes will not be open much later. Fine, so long as you have grace to carry you through. God but, is able, isn't it? Yes, very able. So, because I am not God, I cannot say you must not. 
Yeah, what you've just suggested, churches do it even now. Before you you get married, the church will ask for your genotype. But where these two persons have come with ASAS and they say they must marry, I'm not sure any priest will say, I will not join. If you have agreed, you know it, and you know that you can face it, go ahead. Your grace will be sufficient for you. Mm. Awesome. It's, I, 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 I love the way she cleverly answered the question. <laughs> Cleverly answer the question. It's so cleverly handled, but th the fact remains that you know, you know, as humans, we we tend to love and be loved. So when that comes in as an equation, it is very difficult to separate those who are in love and who feels that when we can we, we can you know ride on the horse or probably horses of God's grace. But whichever way it is, it should be a decision that is well informed. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, you know, that's that's the bottom line of it. You know, it should be a decision that is well informed. Well, we also have more questions coming in. My name's are Pastor Mrs. Ditimi Otagogo. I would like to please ask Her Excellency or the Doctor to please give us an insight on how most of these cases are managed because actually. We are talking of a very serious disorder here. When you happen to have one in your family, there is always clarion call. And we all fret. Don't seem to know how, when the pain starts in these children, it's nothing you want to see. Especially when they call you, you have a sister that has it, I have a junior brother that has it. We seem to not to know what to do. Can we please be well informed on how to act? handle them especially when that pain starts yes with a painful crisis um, it is actually easy to manage when a child is under that's we call it the vessel occlusive crisis we ask that you give a lot of water a lot of water because most crises are actually um, 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 caused by dehydration oh. dehydration yes you see, the child is expected to take a lot of water, water on a normal day. Even when people are not taking, he's expected to take. There is a, a maximum amount of water the child should take. That's the normal human being Good should question. take. But the child has to take more than that. Mm. When, once the child is on fluids most of the time, the likelihood of having crisis is reduced. reduced. Wow. So the, the, when the child... When the child has a painful crisis, you can start with a simple analgesic, paracetamol, and give a lot of fluids. Apart from that, we have hot water bottles, which you can place on the areas of crisis. Most of the time, it is not all over. They will tell you, oh, my back, or my, my knees, legs. or my leg. So, of course, if you have a hot water bottle, you can actually place the hot water bottle on the leg not directly but wrapped in a towel on the leg it helps to increase blood flow to that particular section of the leg and then reduces the okay. crisis apart from that if the child if you're in a position to take the child to the hospital depending on where you are quickly take that child to the hospital in that way the crisis will of course be reduced and taken care of but these are the basic things you do when you have a child with a painful crisis at home. Mm. Yes. Honestly, good question and incredible answers. Thank you very much. What you've just told us now is that having such um, a disorder means that you could easily get dehydrated. Yes. And, and that is what informed crisis mostly. So if you can constantly you know, drink wet yourself, water. drink a lot of water, yes. it will go a long way in managing it. Yes. That is good. Okay, to a woman who has one that she's nurtured, what would you say concerning that? I would say, I won't, it's not like this uh, sickler child is more dehydrated than the normal child. You see, they call it sickle cell because this is like a C. The normal cell is round. So when it's passing through the blood vein, I'm not a doctor, but you know, you have to get yourself informed. The normal cell, when it's passing through the vein, goes straight. It has no obstruction. 
But because this is sea, it could get hooked. That is why the child is expected to take more water so that there will be easy flow. No. It is in the place of that hook that the child will begin to say, I have pain. pain. And that is why they ask you to massage, massage with um, uh, maybe massage even with your hand. Put uh, your hot water bottle just to allow an easy flow. And you find out that the child will ease off easily. easily. Mm. All you need to so just make sure that she's not in a stuffy environment. Give her plenty of water and don't stress her. Okay. Now, I know of a, a, a young girl, very brilliant, talented and all that, who is also going through this as well. And um, she's been so dependent on the on prescriptions that it has led to her being addiction incapacitated in many ways besides being addicted you know she's lost her limb she's lost things oh. she's lost you know as a result of this um how do you manage you know is that that kind of scenario in the chaos uh, basically it is not just the doctor and the nurse we have psychologists, we have psychiatrists who manage the patient. It's a teamwork. And in such a situation of addiction, the psychiatrist comes in. Most of the time, it's difficult winning them off the prescription drugs. Okay. So, of course, she may have been having those prescription drugs on her own. She knew where to get them. Yes, them, that's it. Course, she knows the place she knows to go place. to. And then, she knows how to get up money and she goes for it even when we say don't. Yes. What would have happened was that probably she had given herself so much of those injections. And then, of course, infections follow because of osteomyelitis. And then she loses her limb or her limbs. So in such a situation, we find the orthopedic doctor coming in, the psychiatrist coming in. She needs a lot of counseling. It takes time to actually get her back to normal. So that is what we actually do. So it's totally a teamwork of doctors who have to manage that case. Are there, are there drugs that can be taken to get her off the present um, addiction? It is usually difficult, addicted. but they do get there's a lot of rehabilitation that goes on. Okay. And then, of course, she is worn out of it. Okay. She won't continue. She won't but continue. It, it requires no, the reason a why lot I of ask care. this question is, is, you know, in the Western world, if you're addicted to one thing or the older drugs, as it were, you know, they have a kind the of regulation, yes, mm -hmm. that is uh, applied that would gradually ease that person out of yes. the uh, and That is what the psychiatrists usually do. Okay. There are drugs to take care of that. Not necessarily those uh, addicted drugs, but drugs that could simulate that, that, that helps them with time to get off get it. Off it. Okay, that is what they usually do. You do you have uh, some centers in mind that you think one could approach in terms of uh, visiting a psychiatrist? Yes, um, in Benin, we have the Uselu Psychiatric Hospital. I've been to their rehabilitation center where they are drug addicts. Um, that uh, is should, this be dis be, should you be treated as a... Addiction. No, it's addiction. addiction. So it has to be under the psychiatrist. Yeah, there's another one in um, in Lagos, okay. uh, UBTHS, also takes care of that. There's a rehabilitative center there. And then, of course, um, Lagos, too, has a rehabilitative center. There's another one in Yaba. So there are several places where they have um, this type of uh, treatment. treatment okay. yes. Awesome. This is good. I'm, I am loving this already. <laughs> because it's very prone to a solution and... And that's so interesting. What is Delta State doing right now? Moving from uh, dependence on oil to agriculture. If you uh, if you've been hearing about this year again, because people need to know. Yes, we. One of the five point agenda, the smart agenda, is empowering the youth. So what they do is go to, usually, um, initially they started with using the traditional rulers, but I think now they have started going to them, get youth that are not employed. 
Whatever they can do, they register for it and they are trained. Some fish free, snare, even um, any type of work, tiling and whatever. Self employment, that is what we are going through. People should be entrepreneurs. Let, not, let us not depend on the white collar job. Even as a teacher, we did not depend just on salaries. We are making some little farms behind our homes. homes. So these ones are trained in Songa. Okay. After the training, they are attached to like uh, existing farms, existing tailors, and all. When they are through with the training, they give their starter packs. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Mama Helen and Jude. Mama Helen and